Hey moms, welcome to the Gather Moms podcast. My name is Kate. And I'm Rebecca. We've created this space just for you because we're both moms and we get you. Yes, we believe there truly ain't no hood like the motherhood and we need to be in this together. We also believe we can't mom well without Jesus. So you're going to hear us talk about him too. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Gather Moms and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. All right, mamas, let's jump in. Hey moms, welcome to episode 18 of the Gather Moms podcast, and we are in our season of Mama. We always sing. Can we, we say can't. it without singing it? No, I don't think we can. <laughs> but I've noticed that you and I sing more on the regular, even when we're just chatting in regular conversation Have with each other. Have you been noticing that? I just think it's part of us now. We're just sing-songy. Yes. Yeah. Well, it just, I don't know, makes life fun. Do you and think you that after song. this season is over, we'll be able to say mama without saying no, it? No, we'll always say mama. <laughs> hey, so if you are here listening to episode 18 and you haven't listened to episode 17 yet, I highly recommend that you go back and listen because we are covering the same two women that we covered in episode 17. There was so much excitement in that episode. We just cannot let it go. Drama for those moms. They may want us to let it go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> after all of our... They were a double doozy, yes. the sisters named Leah and Rachel. True sister wives. Oh, true sister wives. Just hot mess. Just yes. an absolute hot mess. And uh, But we, we had code s- words, too. Uh, watermelon flamingo. <laughs> and so we're circling back on them to kind of finish out their story. Because in, our, in that last episode, we were kind of only able to look at the first part, get to know them. We talked about how that they, um, Rachel and Leah, we compared them to Rachel and Monica from Friends. I love it. I still think it's the best. Who were both wonderful women, but one was kind of, you know, Rachel on Friends was kind of the more sought after one. Everyone talked about that she was beautiful. So this is funny. I can't even remember... But I was reading more research about these two ladies. Leah's name meant wild cow. It did not. Yes. Who names their kid that? I don't know. And I can't remember what Rachel's is. We'll have to put it in the show notes. But I want to be like, you guys, really? Don't you wonder if, like, <laughs> we know what their name means now, but did it actually mean that back then? Like, I think was so. mom and dad, like, picking the name, going, this means wild cow? Yes. That, let's as far as do I understand it. it, yes, that's, yes. And so you have to understand, like, why would you pick that name for that kid? She's a baby. All babies are pretty. How did they even know? I don't know. It's like a boy named Sue. You probably don't even know that old country song. Do you know that? No. Oh, that's a legit thing? Yes. Oh, a boy named Sue is a, a great song. Can I listen to it? Is it clean? Yeah, I think All right. so. All right. Yeah. I'll ask Alexa to play it for me later. Yeah. Okay, let me listen to it first, and I'll let you know. I feel pretty confident. It's like an old country song. But so anyway, so Rachel and Leah, we talk about that they're kind of like Rachel and Monica, you know, where they were doing life together. One was a little bit more favored than the other. Leah, like Monica, is very competitive. She wants to spit out all those boys. Um, We talked about how this story comes from Genesis 28, and this boy, Jacob, uh, is sent by his mom, Rebecca, to go to her brother, Laban. Oh, good job, Rebecca. And, look out for your kids. Yeah. And she sends him to Laban to go marry a cousin because that's what they did. Sketchy. So he meets Rachel. He's like, ooh, this is the one I want. So he works for Laban for seven years. Laban does a little switcheroo on the wedding night in that's the That's a legit Netflix series right there. What he happened? Gives in the tent. Him the sister Leah instead. Jacob wakes up the next morning. He's like, what Mm-mm. the what? Mm-mm. And Laban says, work for me for seven more years and you can have her sister, Rachel. He's just getting all the free labor, man. It's real. Sketchy is the word for it. It's like, what are we doing here? It's There's the some... biblical version of Bachelor. It's very problematic, a lot of it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, anyway, then he marries Rachel. And then these two women, now that they're both married to him, they start the race for who is going to give Jacob the most children. Because Leah is hated, God opens her womb and she just starts popping out boys. She has four immediately, two from a servant, and then I think three more and a baby girl. And Rachel... Uh, struggles, so she gives Jacob to her servant, who gives him two boys, and then she has Joseph. That's her first biological child. Which we know is a legit character of the Bible. He goes on to do great things. Goes on to do great things. And as soon as Rachel has Joseph... is this the Joseph? It is. It is. 
Joseph in the dream coat. Yes, and then the brothers don't like him. Yeah, girl. Well, now we know why they don't like him. Why? Because it was Rachel's kid. Oh. <laughs> Leah's boys are like, uh-uh, we know what you did. Mm-mm. Well, okay, their whole setup. Oh, so we're going to get to that because their whole setup is so much about what we read in biblical history. We're connecting the dots right here. Yes, we are. Okay, so she has, Rachel has her first son, Joseph. And once she does, Jacob's like, okay, it's time for us to get out of here. I want to go back to my people that are in Canaan. I've been here, and I think it's called Padnam Aram or something. He's been over here living, you know, with his uncle, and he's ready to go back to his people. So he goes to Laban, and he's like, hey, it's time for me to go. And Laban ends up, you know, no shock here, being super shady as as Jacob is trying to get out with his wives and the livestock that he has earned. And every time they kind of make a deal, Laban backs out on it. Right. And so Jacob just cannot seem to get out of there, you know, and then he has these two wives in this contentious situation and um, he wants to be able to, to go. And so Jacob hatches a plan in Genesis 31 and he calls Leah and Rachel into the field to game plan with them. Okay. Into the field? Into the field. Let's go to the field to talk. Well, because you must know. I mean, surely it was like getting them away from everyone. And well, he's yeah, like, if you lived in a tent, man, you can hear through fabric. <laughs> that ain't no, like, soundproof room. So he pulls them out to the field because he's like, okay, we've got to get a strategy. We've got to get a game plan together, okay? So he calls these two women together. And this is what it says in Genesis 31. It says, so Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah into the field where his flock was and said to them, I see your father does not regard me with favor as he did before. I don't know what favor was before. Right. But okay. He was getting free labor. Yeah. But the God of my father has been with me. You know that I've served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages 10 times. But God did not permit him to harm me. Okay. And so he goes on and he talks about all this struggle and stuff. And then he tells him, the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob. And he said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes and see, I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now rise, go out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. Okay. So he's kind of rallying them like, listen, we're in this situation with your dad. He's making bad choices. And God visited me in a dream. And he said, it's time to go back. Listen, right? That's a dream. Isn't that good? Come on. Yeah. So then it says, then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, is there any portion or inheritance left to us in our father's house? Are we not regarded by him as foreigners? Which I guess this is all bad things. They're like, we're done with him also. Well, you should have been done 14 years ago when he switched up the the marriage deal. Okay, because they say, for he has sold us and he has indeed (laughs) devoured our money. All the wealth that God has taken away from our father belongs to us and to our children. Now then... Whatever God has said to you, do. Yeah, we behind you. We getting all the kids, all the camels. So finally, these mamas get on the same team. Oh, they on the same team now. Okay. They have a mission together that requires both of them. Yes. They know that their families are in a bad situation, right? Yes. They know that their father is stealing from them. They know that, that inevitably that their children's inheritance is in danger because of the shady dealings of their dad. And so as much enmity and jealousy and competition is between them, And this moment, when they know that their families are at stake, they come together, right? I mean, I think Lee is the one that's got to be the most behind it because she got the most kids. (laughs) That's a lot of inheritance. (laughs) Yeah. Rachel's like, I got one. I want them to get it all. Yeah. But you can, you can imagine that, you know, this is just, I don't know, it's just a tough situation for them to be in. And Rachel ends up at some point having another kid. We just, that's not on our necessarily our timeline for today. So they, they follow their plan. And they sneak out of there and they get the going. Well, and Laban catches up to them <laughs> as they're trying to flee. Wait, he's like chasing them down with a chariot or something? He does. Yes. Basically, that's the situation. He catches up to them and he ends up, They, the two men end up working it out and he ends up sending Jacob with a blessing and Jacob returns to his homeland with his family in Canaan. So everybody's happy. Yes. It's a good ending. And Jacob's going back to Esau, who he thought hated him, but Esau loves him. Everything's okay. So then uh, I love that summary. It was that good. Mm. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to read it for yourself, there might be some more. There, There's five chapters about it. Yeah. Hey, hey, Laban ended up happy. Hey, Esau <laughs> wasn't mad anymore. Oh my gosh. Everything is so fabulous. <laughs> okay. But then it gets better because then a few chapters later, it tells us that God blesses and renames Jacob. And we find that in Genesis 35. And it says that God said to him, your name is 
Jacob. No longer shall shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel, and God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. That's a big promise. It's a big deal. Because this shows us how God used Abraham yes, and then his dad Isaac and was now using him to create a nation of people that would follow him. Yes. That nation would be the Israelites. Well, does that not make sense or what? God just chosen add a ites to the end. Yes. I think Jacobites. No, that was an actual people too. I was trying to think if that would be a good name. But no. <laughs> Israelites is better. But I they guess. change he changes his name to Israel. And it's on it's through Israel, right, that God's chosen people are formed. Yes. And those people are made up of twelve tribes. Those 12 tribes come from the combined sons of Leah and Rachel. Because they got themselves 12 boys. 12 boys. That's amazing. 12 boys. Eight from Leah and four from Rachel, all in all. Yes. 12 boys. Because Rachel ends up having another kid. Yes. And so you think about, wow, doesn't God love to do that? He loves to take the wildest, most seemingly disfigured, functional situation, (laughs) you know, it's never the pretty picture that we would pick Yes, of like, these are the people you should choose to build a nation on, right? Yes. No, he chooses this wild situation Yes, with this, you know, father that's been deceitful and these two women that can't get along and they have, some of their boys are from surrogates and I mean, it's just this whole crazy combination but that's who God is going to use to build his nation on that just gives us so much hope for today because you could look at our country and be like we are in a spot yes but it's like God can do anything however he wants make it all come together put a bow on it don't you know here we go that's how he works best yes and you know I grew up in a somewhat dysfunction and you know there's divorced people and remarried and stepmoms and you know and it makes the holidays very complicated. And I remember thinking growing up, you know, it almost, I almost carried it with me as like, you know, a scarlet letter of like, I come from dysfunction. Right. And it gives me so much hope to look at the dysfunction in the Bible and say, no, that does not count you out. That's right. That's where God shows up. He loves to show up in dysfunction. Yes. And make something beautiful out of something so damaged. Well, because that's a reminder to us that it's only God that can do it. If exactly. it was a pretty picture, it would be somehow I would take the glory for that, the pride that I did something so great and look yes, how girl. it turned out. Yes, girl. Okay, so now this is cool. So remember we talked about Naomi. You did Ooh, grandmama. Yes. Naomi. Grandmama. And um, do you remember at the very end, because her story is told in the book of Ruth, And at the very end of Ruth, the women were blessing her once she's restored and given a grandson, right? Those women kind of... Obed. Yes. Those women kind of came around her and celebrated her. And this is what they said to her in Ruth. They said, then all the people who are at the gate and the elders said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. I totally missed that. Girl. Look at this. Isn't that neat? That is really cool. Okay, so here's, I love that line. That they would, now they are something to aspire to That's what I'm just be. thinking. Yes, you would think in the midst of their dysfunction, fighting, craziness, mandrakes, all that stuff. <laughs> There's no way they're getting mentioned again in the word. But then the Bible's like, no, look what they ended up doing. Because the because God got a hold of it. Yes. Right? Yes. God got a hold of it. Thankfully, there was a godly man. You know, Jacob listened to the word of God. He led his family well. And we see how God is able to redeem this terrible situation. Yes. So that now when these women are talked about, it's out of reverence yes. and respect of like, we hope that you can be like them, it says who together built up the house of Israel. The word that sticks out to me in that line is together. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. What started as enmity and fighting and disruption becomes let's get together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're a team now. Yes. And through this team, God builds up his chosen race, the 12 tribes of Israel. Listen, let's just throw it back to Parent Trap, because that totally (laughs) got me going. Don't you remember when they were at camp and they were fighting? Yes. And like trying to like prank each other? Right. And then they get together to bring their parents back and they're singing and happy. 
I mean, this yes. is. I mean, they didn't marry the same guy, but I mean, it's kind of the same. No, with our forces combined. I mean, it's <laughs> teamwork that makes the dream work. Yes. That is a Hindo family phrase. We say it all the time. Teamwork makes the dream work. You know? Yes. It's when we're on the same team that we can really, man, get stuff done. Yes. Do good stuff. Yes. You know? Um, the Bible tells us that. It tells us that we are one body. You know, as, as the body of believers, um, that we are we are all part of the same team. We are all in this together. Yes. Uh, we need each other. We do. As moms, that's why Gather exists, right? Yes. We know that sometimes you feel so lonely in your house or you feel like your story has been so wrought with ugliness and just what you would have never chosen. But when you are able to look at the stories of the women around you who have risen up out of that and allowed the Lord to do a work in them, it gives you such hope. Yeah. And this story gives us such hope. Yeah. That God can do anything. It does not matter what's happened to you or through you, that God can come into that story and he can make something awesome out of it. Yes. Well, the funny thing about moms is, you know, I don't need anybody else to tell me what I'm doing wrong. I'm very aware. (laughs) You know? Yes. I'm aware. Yes. I know. I am acutely aware of the things that I'm doing wrong. I mean, I think sometimes every once in a while we have a blind spot, but for the most part, like, I know where I'm screwing this thing up, yes. you know? I wonder, can you think about any time that somebody kind of said something to you to, like, tell you where you needed to correct your parenting or do something better that kind of stuck with you? Listen, I feel like my kids do it. To you? Yes. I feel like there are times when they're like pointing out things that I forgot or didn't do or didn't make the same or change. Yes. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you? Did you eat today? Do you have clothes on? Yes. Is there water running out of that faucet? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Then go back to your room. Yeah. So this is so funny because my middle child is the most precious girl in America, but she... She likes to be the best. I don't know where she gets that competitive oh, nature. It's whatever. I, don't I, I have no idea. But sometimes she will do something with Caroline where, like, she persuades her to do something or she teaches her to do something. She'll look at me and be like, See, mom, see how I did that? And I'm like, You know what? what? Rude. <laughs> she said, Follow my example. <laughs> yes, I am leading the charge. I'm like, You just go on ahead, you little nine year old. Yes. I've just been over here eating bonbons all these years. Right. You know? I know nothing. Yes, I know nothing. I remember one time we were in the grocery store and, you know, it was so hard. Gosh, I'm out of the phase where I have a toddler that I have to buckle up into the seat. Well, actually, no, I'm not. I mean, I could put Caroline into the Caroline seat. Caroline needs some buckling. But I'm pretty sure she does. We, I haven't done that through the whole pandy. I mean, I haven't taken her into a store and buckled her in a seat Listen, since there March. are some mamas listening right now that probably have not been in a grocery store. They have click-listed, picked up yeah. for the last... I can't even imagine. Like, I don't know. I kind of like going to the grocery store. I yeah. want to pick my own groceries. Yeah. I took Caroline to Target. So we have a rule. If she doesn't want to ride in the seat, she has to have a hand on the cart. She's not allowed to take a hand off the cart. Okay. So that works for us because she likes to be able to kind of be walking around now. She's almost five, you know. So it's probably <laughs> not great for me to still Kate's keep. Kate's been trying to shove her in that little her front in. seat. She's just getting a little big for it. But I swear I have gotten more eyes. And here's what's sad is that sometimes it's it's a maybe a grandma or a mom who's just a little bit ahead of me. And I think their intentions are good. I do too. But I remember Lydia being like three years old and she was sitting in the cart and she had unbuckled herself and she was starting to like try and stand up in right. the seat. Every kid in America does this. Every yes. kid in America. Yes. And the mom came over to me and she, I mean, she probably had 15 years on me or something like that. And she came over and she grabbed my arm and she said, you need to make that little girl sit down. I remember being like, you know what? Okay. Like, I don't, it's it's hard for me to even know how to respond to that. I know. I know. And I think, honestly, so much of older moms, I think it's safety. For sure. I think they are just like, they have seen too many things go right. wrong. And they're like, keep that baby safe. But they just forget what it's like in that moment when you feel so frazzled and so tired. And you have told her to buckle and sit down 24,000 times. Yes. Before you get to aisle one of Target. And you just are like, listen. I've bribed, I've tried, I've threatened, I've, but at some point, 
I mean, this is the mom and me. I'm like, she's just going to have to learn. I when mean, she falls out, she's going to know it hurts. She no. won't know it again. And if you have three kids, then you've gone through this three times. Yes. You know? Yes. I was in Costco. I, man, I don't know why these stories are all coming to my mind, but I was in Costco. <laughs> and those buggies are huge, you know? And I think it was Caleb that was sitting in the front of the Costco cart, and he was trying to wriggle loose and trying to stand up. And a grandma came over, and she talked to me, and she said, my grandson did that, and he flipped out of the the front of the cart and yes. hit his head and yes. I'm like I mean I guess I appreciate it yes but I don't know Rebecca I mean what what are we gonna do when we're in the more grandma phase how do we handle that better well that's what I was just thinking like what would I say because when I see kids do that now I do think oh gosh I don't want them to fall out sure so I'm like what what other way could you do it that would be helpful but not make that mama feel like you're calling out her wrong or what yeah. she's not doing right I don't know See, I don't know, because I feel like, I don't know, I just don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't feel like you need to say anything. I feel like if you're going to say anything to the kid, if you want to maybe make the mom aware that the kid's making a bad choice and she doesn't see it, right? that you say hi to the kid, or I like your shirt, or... Ooh, that's good. You know, some way where you're like, hey, you yes, know, or yes, something, but you're not trying to tell the mom how to do her job. Yes. You know? Yes. Now, there have been times, I've heard in the grocery store, a mom like berating a little kid yes. or, you know, maybe using physical punishment in a way that makes me feel very upset. Right. You know? Right. Um, but gosh, even those situations, it's hard to know, like, where do you step in here? Yes. You know, if I felt like the child was in danger or something very unsafe was happening, but gosh, it's just I don't hard. know. I think, I think you and I are still close enough to the situation where we remember what it felt like. To yeah. just be at the end yeah. of your momming. But, yeah. like, you have to be at the grocery store or you have to get something so there's no other choice. Right. And you have done everything humanly possible. And you are literally just trying to make it home. Like, just make it home. And yeah. I'm trying to think, you know, in that moment, anything someone said to me would just make me, it would, like, tear me apart. I would just fall apart. No, because you're already, obviously, if you've lost it on your kid, you... You're already, there's something that has broken you. There yes. is some straw that broke the camel's back. You are already at your lowest moment. Right, right. You know? Yes. And gosh, it would just add insult to injury to me if someone stepped in. Now, for, uh, for sure, and we're not saying that if a child's in danger or something, of course, we're going to step in. But for the most part, man, gosh, I just need people to tell me I'm doing a good job. Yes, yes. Or, or say, maybe just say, man, my kids used to do that too. It's okay. Yeah. You're going to make it. Yes. You know, just a little word of encouragement. Yes. Yes. I am um, our... We had a pediatrician um, when the my, my older two kids were little. He passed away. And he was the most amazing man. And I remember I actually looked forward to going to the pediatrician, which is kind of a wild thing because normally you hate it because you yes. have to take the kids. You're sitting in this room. You're yes. trying to keep yes. them chill. Yes. There's usually no cell phone signal, so they can't watch anything. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> and you're like trying to make them quiet. So yeah. They can hear. We play games with the pictures on the walls where I'm like, okay, oh, stare at it I'm for like, y'all put us in a different room because we already played all the yes. picture walls <laughs> right here. We're going to need a new picture. We've already been in that room 12 times. Let's go to the next one yes you know it's so tough but so I would actually look forward to going to see this pediatrician because he was just super chill and nice even if things were going wrong or I didn't know what I was doing every time you know what he said to me he said you're doing a great job oh Mom. I love that you're doing a great job yes I cannot even tell you the wind that put in my sails yes, yes you know yes for him just to have looked at my kid and looked at, God, it's going to make me cry. Looked at my kid, looked at our situation and just yes. said, you are doing a great job, mom. Yes. That's all we need to hear. Well, and we are like mamas, you are, you're doing a great job. Yeah. I know you think you may be screwing your kids up or making all the wrong choices, but listen, we all survived. Listen, if Rachel and Leah can produce 12 tribes of Israel that are now recorded in the history of the Bible. Yes. You are doing a good job. I mean, if anybody was getting screwed up, it was that kid that brought the mandrakes in from the field i mean <laughs> he had to know <laughs> what was up kid reuben no nope, yeah. <laughs> no nope, don't do it but seriously you are oh mama you are and we're all screwing up on some level it's not like any of us are doing this thing perfectly right you know we are all messing it up in some way or another and i love that you brought it back to that because 
God does the redemptive work. You know, if I was perfect, then the glory would rest on me it and would. my kids wouldn't need Jesus. No. But because I'm imperfect, those places can point through to my need for Jesus and focus their eyes there. Yes. No, for sure. And I think that's part of the reason that we do this podcast. Yeah. Just to remind you guys that we're right there in it with you and we understand what it feels like to have a very good, no bad, sorry, forgive me whatever yeah. day. Yeah. And and just knowing that, you know what, I'm going to be able to do this again tomorrow because God is still God in heaven. That's right. He steps in, he redeems um, for us. So I love a scripture that I want to share with you. Um, it's from Hebrews 10, 25. And there are lots of versions of this scripture. And we've even kind of referenced as, as we've been talking that um, we shouldn't give up meeting together, you know, is what, this is the paraphrase of Hebrews 10, 25. It says, you know, don't give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing, but make it um, part of your life that you look for ways to get together and cheer each other on. Yes, yes. And the message version of this verse says, let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. (gasps) The big day. Isn't that fun? What's that big day? Is that like the end of the world? Yeah, when Jesus comes back. Okay. Okay. But I love you this doing that language. Next week? You coming back next week? Oh, well, come on. Take him. We don't we'll know. take him. Yeah. Um, I love this language because it says, let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out. Yes. And, you know, I think that this is something that you are especially good at. You're especially good, Rebecca, at um, encouraging other mamas and spurring them on. You get very creative with it. What is your practice? What do you do to kind of help keep that a priority? You know, what is your, do you have any kind of system by which you regularly write notes and you get gifts for people and you drop them off? How do you, how do you do that so well? One of the things that I think I have learned over the years is to listen to the whisper. Mm. And so there are so many times that I'm in conversation with somebody or even like in a group setting, but someone else is talking and I ask for God to whisper to me when there's a need. And I literally feel like he does. I literally feel like he says that mama needs encouragement or wow, did you hear the emotion in her voice? Mm. Or she probably just needs to know that she's not alone. And so once I figured out that God was whispering to me, I started asking for it. God, would you whisper to me? Would you reveal moms that need anybody, moms, husbands, children that need love and encouragement? And so one of my favorite things to do is write notes. I don't think everybody's a note writer. I have the worst handwriting in America, which my friends can attest to, because sometimes they have to call me and be like, hey, what was that word? Uh I couldn't read it. But I love to write notes. My mom was a note writer. Mm -hmm. She has impeccable handwriting. I mean, it's gorgeous. But I just, I took up that practice. I feel like it's a lost art. And so I actually, um, I texted a lady the other day. I'd spent some time with her and I was like, I can't find your address. I want to write you a note. And she was like, a note? What's that? Do people actually send mail anymore? (laughs) Because I think it's really just fun to get something in the mail or to get a note. But, and then honestly, I just, I say whatever God brings to my heart. You know, I, I don't try to make it flowery or, um, you know, what would, what would they think sounds good? I'm just like, dude, you're doing a good job. Or I totally get what you're going through. Or I want you to know that God's with you. Don't give up. I just think people need that sincere, genuine encouragement. Yeah. And when you come across something in the store that you think a mom might like yes. or something that you just go, oh my gosh, she was talking about this the other day. Like, why not just get it? Yeah. Like, why not just do it? Yeah. Our money, sometimes I think we hold on to sight too tightly for fear that we're going to need it for something personal. Right. And God continues to tell us in his word that he will provide more than enough. Yeah. And so when I give back to his people in a way that encourages, I think he's going to take care of me. Gosh, Rebecca, that's so good. So that reminds us, we just talked about that. Um, I think numerically I'll get it right, but it was in the episode. Was that about Sophie? When you talked about it, it was a freedom moment. Yes, Mama Sophie. yes. Just order it. Just do it. Just, just buy it. Just do it. You yes. know, when you when you hear the Spirit talking to you, when He opens your eyes to something, when you see something that might bless a mama, that you just go ahead and do it. Yes. 
Just, yes. just do it. Just lean into that moment. I love hearing you talk about being just aware and listening to the spirit, kind of opening your eyes to other moms. Um, I have a collection of letters and cards from you. I wish I had kept them all. At some point in our friendship, I just, I was like, oh, I need to just start keeping all of these, you know, because I would keep one and put it on my desk for a few weeks or something as a sweet reminder. And then you have to clean up your desk, you know, but now I just have a whole collection and it's probably five or so inches tall, you know, if they're all stacked together of just all the notes and letters that you have given me over time. You Listen, know? if you need to clean your house out one day and throw those away, it's okay. No, I'm making a book. <laughs> I'm making a book. <laughs> notes from Rebecca, you know, and when I'm feeling down, I just get to go through those and say, this person believes good things for me. Yes. You know, yes, this person is cheering me on and it just makes such an incredible difference. Well, it listen, the time difference. it takes to encourage somebody is minute in the grand scheme of life. Yeah. So don't think, well, I don't have time or I'll do it later. Don't say I'll do it later because you won't do it later. Right. Just do it right then. Yeah. Just do it right then. And I really believe, and I think God teaches this in his word, that the more we ask for him to speak to us and the more that we're obedient to that voice, the more he does it. Yeah. So if you're thinking in your mind right now, oh, I don't know, like, I've, I don't know if I've ever felt that. Well, just start asking. Yeah. God, when I'm in the grocery store, and it, literally it'll happen like at the grocery store or even in Target, and you hear a baby crying, and you come around the corner and you see the mom standing there, even if you don't say a word to her, just pray for her. Okay, well, you know what? And that's the answer, too, to our question we were asking about what do we do in situations when we see yes. the kid in danger or the mom's having a hard time. Man, why aren't we praying? Yes, yes. Why aren't we saying, God... What should I, do you want me to do anything here? Right. You know? Right. And saying, God, please provide that mama with all that she needs. Yes. Give her peace and energy and patience. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. Yes. Why are we not, why isn't that our first response? Well, and you know, some of it may be um, in the story of Lee and Rachel, there was a competitiveness there, you know? There was a who's better or who's got it more together yeah. or who's more favored. I don't know. I think sometimes as moms, we're a little competitive with each other. and We kind of want to feel like, oh, well, I'm doing good today. My kid's not crying today, so I must be winning. Oh, man. You know, it feels real good when you make it through the whole store and your kids made good choices the whole time. It's yes. like, oh, you feel kind of proud of yourself in oh, your yeah. whole situation. Yes. You hashtag know? winning. That's why I tell my kids, hashtag winning. And I do think there is that, that you could, you know, whether that's truly your heart of hearts or not, I think there is, you know, shopping cart comp- competition <laughs> where, you know, moms, you can look at another mom and see, oh man, she looks cute. She's completely dressed. Her kids are sitting in their cart making good choices. And I'm over here just in a whole uproar, yes, you know, yes. I'm on yesterday's makeup. My hair hasn't been washed in six days and yes. my kids are just going nuts. Yes. Yes. Or you can be the other side of it where you're the one who that day you happen to have it all together, all together. And you see the other mom who's struggling and somehow you forget that you were just in that situation a few days ago, Yes, you know, man, that's what pride does. It does. It does. Yeah. But I think that's what's so beautiful about gather. And I think it's what we want our moms to see is listen, we are all in this little uh, hard moment together, and if we will just wrap our ram- our arms around each other, I think that honestly, we're all going to get to the end of it having much more joy and excitement for life than feeling like that was a beat down. Much more joy. Man, we don't, the comp- competition and comparison does not help. You know, if you think about it, if we bring it back to Rachel and Leah, can you imagine if they wouldn't have teamed up? You know, they wouldn't have when Jacob gave the rally cry and said, hey, we've got to get on the same team and get out of this situation. If they if they had not if they would have stayed, you know, in this terrible bitterness that they had against each other. Right. You know, Um, but because they allowed God to work in their hearts to create unity, man. They created this team. And then they were listed in the book of Ruth as, hey, let's celebrate these two sisters yes. that produced these 12 boys that are now the 12 tribes of Israel Yes, that produced the lineage of Jesus Christ. Yes. So I want to think about, you know, coming out of this conversation, I don't know that you need to have a one thing because... You're doing all of this really well. Oh, stop it. Honestly, stop it. I got to have some one things. You no. do this really well just no. in general. Okay, but here's the deal. Because I think, again, we our outward expressions sometimes don't reflect our inward feelings. Sure. So even if you're a, a mom that does great at encouragement, 
don't think that there's not an inward desire in mm. there to be celebrated or glorified for what you do. That's good. And so I'm going to continue to lay that down before the Lord and go, look, if there is a selfish motive here or a prideful intention, God, would you just take that from me? That's so good. No, I can't expect to be perfect, but I sure can lay it down at the feet of Jesus and say, I don't want to, I don't want to celebrate that in my life. I want this to really be about the other person. So Man, that's good. That's good. For me, it's just the simple listening to the whisper and and doing what God is asking me to do in the moment and not putting it off. Right. If it's just, I see the cute thing in the dollar spot, I just buy it. Buy it. You yes. know? Yes. And just go go bless the mama with it. If I think about her, that I send the text. Send the text. If I read a scripture and it brings somebody to mind, I send them that verse That's over, right. You That's know? right. Yes. And then I just live in that moment. Don't put it off. Don't question right. it. Don't hesitate. Yes. Walk with spiritual eyes, ask God to show you, and then live it out as I he's love asked that. you. I love that. Okay, moms, we are so thankful that you are here. We love getting to spend time with you. We love that you are in this space with us. And I hope you know that we are on your team. Whoop, whoop. We are cheering you I got on. my pom <laughs> We love you so much, and we really do know that you are doing great. Hey, um... Remember that if you are loving this podcast, don't forget to go and leave us a review. Every time you leave us a, a five-star rating, hopefully it's five stars. Ooh, do we want them to put five stars? We do. Hey, I feel like it's at Kohl's when you check out and the little cashier's like circles her name and she's like, hey, if you'd like to leave me a review, really I'm hoping for five stars. Oh, is that what she says? She does. She's oh. trying to win a trip right now. I don't know if y'all been to Kohl's lately, but Cute. she's trying to win some. So every time she's like, can you give me five stars? Oh, that's cute. Yeah, you're a cold shopper. I love it. Um, so we would love to win with five stars. We ain't going anywhere, but and, yeah, we don't get a trip. And, but, and then if you leave a review, you know, those, honestly, it makes such a huge difference. When people are searching for a podcast for mamas, it's going to encourage them. The more ratings you leave, the easier it is for them to find us. And then right. when they read your comments, they go, oh, okay, well, maybe I would like this too. It's like and Amazon for the podcast. Eat. People read. I, I, do. I, I always read the reviews. Read the reviews. Yes. So thank you so much for cheering us on. We love you guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.